Hi everyone, it's Ken with Ken's Creations. I am coming to you today to show you a card I made um, actually using my Silhouette Cameo and software. Um, I have a foster son who is obsessed with Spongebob, so I wanted to make him a Spongebob card and I originally went straight to my Cricut Spongebob cartridge, um, which I've used in the past before. Um, however, the disadvantage uh, to using the Spongebob cartridge on a time limit is it is a very, um, when using Cricut Craft Room and use my Cricut Mini, it has very, very small parts and it's very intricate. And the one thing I will say with the Silhouette Cameo over the Cricut machines is it does a much better cut when it comes to small pieces. Um, I was on a little bit of a time budget, so... I opted to actually go to my silhouette and use the print cut feature versus um, cutting out Patrick and Spongebob and layering them. Um, so it was a choice I made for time reasons, not because I don't like the cartridge or don't um, necessarily use it. So anyways, um, so with that said, we I did use this 100% um, of my silhouette cameo using a print and cut feature on everything. Um, I downloaded Spongebob. Patrick, the background on the inside of the card. I also downloaded um, the jellyfish and the background of the jellyfish. So the card itself says, Oh, thank heaven, Daniel is turning seven. And there is the inside of the card. All right. Um, so let's jump right into it and show you how we did this. The first thing we need to do is we need to download all of our components. So we need to download our backgrounds, the bikini bottom, and the jellyfish fields. We need to download uh, Spongebob, Patrick, these flowers that match Spongebob's world, and the jellyfish. Okay? So what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and go to Google. Now I always get my images off Google and I will show you why. Um, let's start with Spongebob because I can show you the best way on this one. When you look up Spongebob, it brings up all your website searches. If you go to images, it's going to bring up all the images of Spongebob. What I like about Google that I can't seem to do on Yahoo is let's say once you find the image, for example, I used this image. When you click on him, the best thing in Silhouette Cameo is the bigger the file, the better the quality of the picture when you print it. What I'm talking about is this right here where it says 1200 by 1786. The higher that number is, the better quality. What's nice on Google is you can actually hit more sizes and it's going to bring up all of the photos that it registers and it's going to go from the highest resolution down to the lowest. So you can actually see, oh, this is my highest resolution. Now the two ways to download this to your computer is you can either click and drag it so you would click and drag it onto your desktop like that, or you can right click and hit save image as, and I always save it to my desktop so that way it's right there ready for me to go. So I would say desktop, I can name it whatever I want, Spudge Pants, Spudge Bob, whatever you want, hit save, and then it will save it to your desktop, okay? So we have SpongeBob. Let's go ahead and then look up, um, Patrick Star. So once again, you're going to find the one that you like or that you feel is the best one um, to use in whatever you're creating. And as you can see, there's a ton of different options here that you can look into um, doing. Um, the one that I ended up selecting was um, this one here. Once again, click on it, more sizes, and it's going to give you all your sizes. You want to go with the highest one, you're going to go ahead right click save image, save it to your desktop. Okay? Now let's go ahead and do the backgrounds. Background, excuse me. So I knew I wanted bikini bottom. So if you actually go SpongeBob, bikini bottom background, once again, it's going to bring up all the different backgrounds. I personally liked the first one, which was this one right here. So we're going to click on it. You can, once again, hit more sizes. Right click. Save image as, save it to our desktop, and that one is done. 
The next one I wanted was I wanted to showcase the jellyfish fields. So once again, very easy. You're going to go SpongeBob, jellyfish field, background, and that's going to bring up all of your different options. So um, you can take a look at them. You have a whole bunch of different styles here. Um, once again, just find the one that you like and save it to your desktop. So that's going to give us, so far, we have Patrick, Spongebob, the background here, and we have the background here. So we still need to find our jellyfish and our flowers. So we're going to go Spongebob and flower, and that's going to bring up the flower pattern. My favorite one I liked was this one here. So I just went ahead, right clicked, save image as, saved it to my desktop, and we were good. The last thing that I wanted to look up was a jellyfish. Now the jellyfish was a little bit harder because when you look up your jellyfish, you're going to see a lot of the cartoon ones, okay? Um, this one here I believe is a, a um, one someone just draw it. Well when I went to this one I saw where it says try these two, this one here by dragoart.com and I really like this one, it was simple, it was clean. Um, so I actually ended up visiting the page of where this came from, and as you can see, here's one all colored in. He actually shows you how you could draw it, and you could actually probably draw it in the Silhouette um, software, but I actually um, went ahead and maximized that, and I saved this image, once again, to my desktop. Okay? So now we've downloaded all of our elements. We have Patrick, Spongebob, our flowers, the background. And now we have our jellyfish and our background here. So let's go ahead and launch our Silhouette software and get started on our project. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set up our page. So if you've watched any of my other videos, I always do this so that's way I'm not later on trying to fix everything. So we're going to make sure we show our registration marks, which tell us where we cannot put any of our product or any of our prints. And then we want to go ahead and make sure that it's when it is ready, it knows that it's a texture cardstock at 80 pounds. And then we want to make sure it's set up at 8.5 by 11, because my printer prints on 8.5 by 11, 85 pound cardstock. Once we have our page set up, we just need to go ahead and import our items. So the first thing we're going to start with is our bikini bottom background. So here it is on my desktop. We're going to click it and drag it right onto my mat. Now it always ends up being huge at first. What we want to do is we want to select it and make sure this box is around it. And if you notice on my picture, it's going on a 5 by 7 card. Okay, 5 by 7 card. But I wanted to layer it a little bit with different colors. So I'm actually wanting this to be a 4.5 by 6.5. So when I go to resize this, I'm going to go to this little icon here where it says scale, I am going to say I want my width to be 4, or excuse me, 6.5 and my height to be 4.5. And we want to make sure that this does not have lock aspect ratio because then it will miss, um, it will make your sizes kind of funky. Hit apply and it shrinks down to the size I want. Now right now, if I was to send this to my printer and then my silhouette, it would not cut around it because I've not told it to cut. So we're going to select it, make sure there's that box around it, and hit cut edge. Okay, so that background is now done. So the next thing we're going to do is little SpongeBob here. So once again, we're going to click my desktop and drag him on here. And as you can see, SpongeBob is huge, which is great. That means he's going to have a really good detail. We're going to click the box around him. And this time we do want to lock that aspect ratio because we want him to stay that same size. So I want him to be um, two and a half inches tall. So I'm going to put 2.5 in the high box and hit apply. And there he goes. Shrinks right down. Look how happy he looks. All right. So once again, if I go to cut, it's not going to cut this guy because I haven't told it. The problem is, even if I hit cut edge, I put a box around him and hit cut edge, it's going to cut around here, which we do not want. So we're going to say no cut for right now and close out of that. So we have to tell Silhouette that we want to cut around him. 
How we do that is we're going to go to our trace option, which is the one with the little blue square in it. We're going to select trace area, and we're going to draw a box around SpongeBob. Okay. Now once it's there, you'll see this yellow. We want to make sure SpongeBob is all yellow. So we're going to turn off a high pass filter, and we're going to turn our threshold all the way up. Now when you do that, sometimes you'll see some of your images have extra yellow around it, which we do not want. So just go ahead and increments take your threshold down until all the yellow is just in SpongeBob. Okay? Now you can either hit trace outer edge or trace. If you hit trace, it's literally going to trace any spot that there is not yellow, which I do not want. Okay? So I'm going to hit trace outer edge. So now if I move SpongeBob, you'll see it's just tracing his outer edge. Okay? So I'm going to hit this undo so he goes right back in there. So right now, once again, if I go to my cut option, look, now it's just cutting around SpongeBob, okay, which is what we want. So right there, it's going to cut just around SpongeBob, okay, which is perfect. All right. I just want to make sure he's cutting there. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and bring Patrick in. Oh, there's Patrick. So a couple things on Patrick before we start on him is he has these three little dots here, which obviously I do not want. So I am going to go ahead and go in here. There's a little eraser here. And we're going to go ahead and erase out those dots. So that way it's not included. Okay? Same thing again. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go in and we have to trace him. So we're going to select trace area. Make sure it's all around Patrick. We're going to take our high pass filter off, our threshold up. So he's a little grainy, so I want to bring him down just a smidge to where he's nice and even. Trace outer edge. And just like that. There he is. Okay. So now we have our three things. It's cutting around here, it's cutting around Patrick, and it's cutting around SpongeBob. Now, I've had some people say that right now, technically, it's not cutting. That that red I'm seeing is just the... Um, the trace edge and if you hit cut edge it will actually put a cut around all of this stuff I tested this out and by hitting no cut that trace option it still cuts him out so I know I might have some comments that say no it doesn't work it works for me so I'm not sure um, what is done differently there but um, when I send this to the cutting it does cut that out now the big thing is is we want to make sure that we draw a box around Spongebob and we group him. And the reason why is now when he moves, he'll be one piece. Okay? Same thing around Patrick. Oops. Oh, that's why we like our undo button. Okay, and now they're grouped. Okay, the last thing we need to do is create our flowers. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and bring our flower in. Now, I always like to put our flower on the gray part so I can see it, okay? I wanna select my flower and I do not want this dot in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and erase that. Okay. Now, once again, I have to trace this guy. And the reason being is I'm actually going to trace it. And I don't have to do any high pass filter. It's showing me the trace option right there along it. So if I hit trace or trace outer edge, it's going to trace it. So now if I move that trace, there it is. Okay? So now I can 
get rid of this one, and here's my flower. So if I select around it now, and let's say I want to fill it full of red, brown, light brown, it's already done, okay? Once again, I can then go to my cut option, hit cut edge, and we're good to go. Now on this one, I believe I did some in purple and blue. And what I actually did on this, I don't know if you can see it, but in the photo, I have my purple going from light to dark, the blue going from light to dark, so on and so forth. So I wanted to keep that um, that way. So what I did is I actually went to this one here that has a blue going from dark to light, and it gives you all of these different options. And just play around with it. You could do this blue, you could do purple, um, you can change it to where down here where it says direction, it will change the different directions. So I think I'm the purple one, I went this purple, and I went, I wanted a little bit more white on the end. So that's what I did. Now, as you can see on the card, I have a whole bunch of different sizes. So all I did was I knew I wanted my biggest one to be one and a half inches. So once again, I go here, lock aspect ratio. I want my biggest one to be 1.5. Hit apply and I'll shrink down. Now I have a total of five flowers in different sizes. So literally all you have to do is right click on your image, duplicate, and we're gonna do that five different times. Okay, and then literally you can just go and change your sizes. So we're gonna do one at one and a, one inch. Let's do a couple at 0.5 inches. Let's do this one at 1.25. Yeah, for fun, let's do this one at like 1.1. Okay? And then you can go through and pick out whatever colors, different ways you want to do it. Um, and as you can see in the picture here, that's exactly what I did. Now, that takes care of all of our cut pieces in the front. Okay? So in the end, you should have something... Um, once you redo all of your pieces and move them around, you should have something that looks like my SpongeBob here. Let me go and open it for you. Okay, and I move mine around. Actually, that's not the right one. I apologize. So um, you can move yours around and do different things with it. Um, okay. So we have our thing here. We have SpongeBob, so let me move some stuff around because I want to fit it all on one page. Okay, now before I ever print it, I always make sure my cut lines are there. So there's red lines. Red lines indicate that it's being cut. Okay. Make sure I'm not in my print section, which I am right here, so we need to move this guy up a little, which means we need to move Patrick up a little. Okay, and then when you get to this part, you're ready to send it to your printer, and once it prints, you're ready to send it to your silhouette and cut, okay? Now, once everything's cut, what I did on here is I did cut a piece of my green cardstock at 4.75 and 6.75. And then how I incorporated this is I actually used, um, they are called Sharpie Stain Permanent Fabric Marker right here. And I actually put a little bit on each flower. And then I instantly used Ranger Stickles Glue in the crystal. And while the marker was still wet, I smeared it with that crystal to give it that nice look going from dark to light. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the front and then we'll come back and I'll show you how I did this. If you've seen any of my other videos, it's pretty much the same. Okay, so the only thing we needed to do in here is create the seven, the background, and the jellyfish, okay? So I always start with a new clean slate. So once again, we wanna go through, show registration marks, okay? So let's start with the background. 
we want to go ahead and bring our jellyfish in, which is right here. Just click, drag it. I want to go ahead and make it 4.5 wide, oh, excuse me, 6.5 wide and 4.5 wide. Except for I do not want it to say lock aspect ratio. So let's do that again, 6.50, 4.50, hit apply, and there it is. We're going to select it and make sure it cuts around the edge. Okay, so the jellyfish. This one is a little interesting how you have to do it. So I'm going to click and drag in my jellyfish. Once again, it's, it's huge, so we need to resize it. I think I did it at, I want to say 1.5. Yep. And we're going to zoom in on that so I can show you what I do. Now what I did is I need to make three of these. So I'm going to hit duplicate. And we're going to do that one more time. Okay. And what I always do whenever I have something on this is I move them off so I can see the whiteness that is around it. Now what I did is I did a total of five jellyfish. So a big one, two medium ones, and a small one. So what I did is I started with the big one. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on that. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the jellyfish that I don't want. So I'm going to go to my eraser and literally erase the parts I don't want. So I'm going to erase all of this part. Okay. So, and there's different erasers. So you can use like a nice square one. The only reason I use the round is that way when I get in here. It's easier. Now, there could be other ways to do this, to be honest. I'm sure there is. My way is probably not the only way or the right way. Um, but it's just the way that I've discovered it, only having my machine um, a few weeks now. Um, that's worked for me. So once again, here's our jellyfish. Okay. So same thing I did with the flowers. I'm going to go ahead and trace around it. So I'm going to select my trace area. I'm going to then just, I want it to just give me a red line, so I'm going to leave everything the same. I'm going to hit trace. Now if I move my jellyfish out of the way, oops, sorry. I told you wrong, trace outer edge. Okay, so it's just going to do the outer edge. So if I move my jellyfish out of the way, there's my jellyfish. So I can get rid of that, and then I can come in here, select my jellyfish. I can go pick what color I want. And that is done. Now, as you can see in my picture, I have dots on my jellyfish. Right here, 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 and here. So, let me show you how I did that. All I did is I zoomed in a little bit. I came over here to where there's these circles. And to be honest, I just went on my jellyfish and I started doing circles. I did some that were off the jellyfish a little bit. And you can do as many as you want, as less as you want. No big deal. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we have to color in those circles. So I'm going to select the ones that I've drawn and color in with whatever color I want. Oh, I have to move a jellyfish out of the way. So color in all these darker colors, whatever color you want. Okay, now I'm going to bring my jellyfish back and just kind of position where I thought I wanted those dots. So about right there, okay? Now what we're going to do is we have to go back into this because we have to get rid of these here that are outside the jellyfish. So I'm going to zoom in again, just so we can get it pretty up close here, which is what I love about this software. And what's great about this software is you can come through and erase anything, okay? So I'm actually going to erase these. Now what will, you'll see will happen is it will automatically adjust to make the line straight. So I'm just going to take this to my best ability. I'm going to erase it and watch what happens. 
it adjusts your line. So I, I dug a little too deep there. So I'm going to go ahead and hit undo. And once again, if you want to get in close as close as you can to make it best, that's the best possible. So we're going to go along the edge here again. And then watch. It automatically fixes it. Okay. Now, this is SpongeBob, so it can look a little um, distorted, but you can get as close as you can to, to get it exactly how you want. Now, once you have it where you like it, you're going to go over here and make sure you hit click. You're going to draw a box around it, and you're going to hit group. Okay? So now when you move it, it's all grouped together. Once you have a box around it, you're going to go to your cut option, and you're going to make sure it just says cut edge. Because if you hit cut, it's going to cut everything, even those little circles. We don't want that. So just cut edge. Okay? Now you're literally going to do that with every one of these jellyfishes. And what I did is I had, um, the next one I did, I erased this portion. The next one I did, I erased this portion. And then all I did is I literally went and duplicated them. Gave me a second one, and you can change the size, do whatever. But that's literally all I did to make my jellyfish. Okay? So once you have all your jellyfish, you're just going to position them all different ways. I'm trying to make it so the video is not long, but I'm going to show you just how I did that again. Because the first time I did this, um, I didn't know how it would work out, and I didn't know I had so much liberty with the Silhouette software. And that's one thing I do have to say I love about Silhouette. The software is, the possibilities are endless. And if, if you're not afraid to just jump in and play around with your software, you cannot hurt anything. You can't. And so I will tell you, um, when I first bought my Silhouette, I had a lot of people say, download the software and start playing with it. Because you'll be surprised on how easy it is to use, how easy it is to learn, and how much of control you have. Unlike other products out there and their own software, this Cameo Silhouette Cameo does not limit you on what you can do. They don't have rules. They don't have things that say, you know, you can't do that. So you literally can do everything you need to on this. So once again, I got rid of everything I don't need, okay? We're going to go ahead and we're going to select that trace area again. So we're going to draw our trace around it. It's going to put it all in yellow. We're going to hit Trace Outer Edge. We're going to move this white part out. You don't need that anymore, so just delete it. Go back to here. There is your happy little jellyfish. We're going to go ahead and color him. So let's make this one a darker pink. And now you're going to go over here once again to your circles and just start drawing circles on it. And I did all my circles in different sizes, no rhyme or reason, just drew a whole bunch of circles. Okay. Once you have your circles the way you like it, you're going to come and move your jellyfish out of the way. You're going to come through and select each circle and fill in your dots. Okay. Once you've filled in your dots, move your jellyfish back where you want it. So I think I like it right about there. I always zoom in on this part just because when you're racing, the closer you are, the better. And you're just going to erase the part of that you don't want and it will automatically adjust. One great thing, if you don't like how it turned out, just hit that little back button. Oh, look at that. So easy if you make a mistake to fix it. Okay? All right. So there's our jellyfish. Last thing you want to do before you do anything, draw a box around it, and we're going to hit group. And then we want to go to our cut and just cut the edge. Right here you can see I missed some on my eraser and there's some cut lines. No problem. Go to the eraser and just make sure it's erased out. Now when you go to the cut lines, they're gone. Oh, there's another one right here if you can see it. Erase. That's how much control you have. I can't I can't even tell you how this software is amazing. That's all I have to say. I, I am a little excited over it and 
if you can't tell already. But anyways, um, you're going to do that um, uh, once again over here on this jellyfish. Um, and then what we want to do is just right click and duplicate because I want another one. And we're just going to put them down here. Okay. So right now before I send this to the printer, once again, always, always check your cut lines. And we're cutting around all of that stuff. We're not cutting the individual circles. So send it to your printer. Send it to your Cameo, and it's going to cut the pieces off for you. And there you have the jellyfish. Now all I did is I used some Martha Stewart glitter pens to give the glitter on the jellyfish to give it that translucent look like they were in water. And that's all I did. I used some foam squares right here and here to bring up the jellyfish. That was it. So the last thing we need to do is our saying. Um, now I wanted the, the, the writing to be as close to the SpongeBob writing as possible. So what I did is I actually went to defot.com, which I'm sure if you've watched any of my videos, you know is my favorite site. And I literally just searched under SpongeBob. I th actually, I think I just put sponge. And it brought up these different ones. So there was two that I liked, Sponge Font and Krabby Patty. So all you have to do is download the Krabby Patty one or whatever one you like. Install it into your Silhouette software. I'm going to open another window. And on the front of the card, I just wanted to keep it simple with a rectangle. Very easy. All I did is I went up here. First, I went and did my writing. So I did, um, I went and said I was doing text over here, text up here. And then in this text box, I just put Krabby because I knew it was called Krabby Patty. There it is. And I put it at, I believe, 36, clicked here. And then my sentiment was, oh, thank heaven. So I did it all in caps. Oh, oops, that's not caps. Oh, thank heaven. Oops. Okay. Um, I did it in, I believe purple writing, so I went up here, hit purple. Now, if I was to just leave it like this, it's going to cut out each individual letter. We don't want that. So I'm going to make sure it says no cut around that. So I just want that part to print, okay? And then I did a box around it. So all I did is I drew a box, like so. Okay, I drew a box around that one and made sure that this one was centered. And how you do that is you go to this one that has the three lines and you just hit centered and it will actually move your text. So let's say mine was really, really funky and my text writing was way this right here. And you're like, well, that's not even. That's how easy it is. Just draw a box, hit center, puts it right in the center. Oh, I love that feature. Okay, so move the oh thank heaven out of the way because what I want to do is I want to make two more of these because I have the white, then I have a purple and a blue. So all you're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select it. We're going to hit this offset and I want to do a outside offset because that's going to draw a box around this box. It's going to put it automatically with corners and at 0.25. I want my corners instead of being round to be squared, so I'm going to hit this. And I'm going to bring it down a little bit. I only want it to be at about 0.20. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is the same thing again. I'm going to select this outer rectangle. I'm going to go to my offset, hit offset. On the corner, we're going to bring it down to 0.20. Okay. Now I have my three. This one we want to be white, so I always move it on to gray to make sure it's white. This one we want purple. This one we want blue. Okay, so we're going to move these around to where we can print them. And this one we want our sentiment in it. Uh oh, look at that, it's hidden. Not a problem. We're just going to go ahead and right click and we're going to hit. Send to back. 
and that sent this white part to back. So once again, let's say we moved this one. Let me show you how that looked. So you can actually move stuff to front and back. Bring to front, bring to back, bring forward, bring back. So you can do all of that software. So once again, I want to make sure it's centered. I'm going to draw this around it. We're going to go to this center. It's going to move it a little bit. And then this one we want to group because this one we're going to print and cut the outer edge. So I'm going to right click and hit group. So no matter what I do now, it's right there. Okay. Oh, here I am not following my own instructions. I want to make sure I get my registration marks on there and set my page up. Okay. So that takes care of the front card part. Then we need to do the seven. Seven um, was super easy. All I did is go here. It's still on Krabby Patty. Krabby Patty. I did it, I believe, at 72. Oh, no, this one I remember. I did it like 200 and some. 288, I think. Might have even been more because I wanted it to be about half the card size. So right now it's 4.4. So this is what I did. So as you can see in the picture, I have two different sevens. I have a, one here and one behind it. Once again, super easy. Just put your box around it. We're going to hit our offsets, which is this one here. Hit offset and it automatically does that other seven one. I move this seven out of the way and I just did the different colors. So I did a darker peak on the top, I believe. Yes, and a lighter pink on bottom, and moved it to where I can print it. And then doing the same process I did up here for Oh Thank Heaven, I did the exact same thing right here where it says Daniel is turning dot dot dot. It's the exact same process as this right here. And guys, that was it. So. This card was created 100% using the print and cut feature. It was 100% of images we downloaded right off of Yahoo or Google. I didn't have to pay for the images. And it was a very quick way of doing a card that would normally take a lot of time um, layering. Now, personally, I love to layer. I think it gives it so much more dimension um, and it's a great look. But in a time crunch, this really, really saved some time. And it still turned out, as in my opinion, very, very good. Um, the, as you can see, it cut around that just perfectly, it cut around Spongebob just perfectly. Um, I did raise all these up with 3Ds and then I just glued these down here. So, um, it's not my favorite card, however, it, it was a great way to show just what this software and Cameo Silhouette is capable of. It's just, I can't tell you enough how great this machine is and the, the endless, endless possibilities. Well, thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Thank you so much for everyone who follows my blog at www.creativeken. That's K-R-E-A-T-I-V-E-K-E-N dot blogspot dot com. And then a big shout out to all of my followers on YouTube that I just recently started. I would not do this without you guys. I would not have this passion without you. I love you all. Thank you so much for watching.